Evening and welcome once again to Gaming Under the Influence. I'm Mike here with Alex, coming to you from Green Dragon CVR and Woodbridge to talk about video games. How are you, bud? Yeah, I'm doing well, man. How are you? I'm uh, having an excellent week, not oh. only because of the many wonderful games I'm playing, but especially because of the epic failure of Sony's DEI live service shooter combo. Absolutely. Board. Jumping right into it. I like it. That's uh, pretty much, I have to say, the same sentiments, right? Like yeah, I've it's... been leaning back, warming my yeah. feet on the dumpster fire. <laughs> I've been so looking forward to this. Obviously not for the release of the game, but for it to release, to see for how it, to release, yes. <laughs> yeah, to see how it would unfold, right? Yeah. And it barely even unfolded. Like, the game just fell flat on its no, face. It just dropped right like a wet gate. turd. Yeah. <laughs> Splattered Total, maybe like, in less than 700 directions just, and that's the story disqualified <laughs> not even on the map oh yeah. god it's a historical failure even yes. paul passi at forbes had uh, mentioned on his twitter i think he's you know he the guy is a it. sellout but amongst journalists he's one of the few talking about the catastrophic failure of this game yeah most he, are writing fluff pieces this guy's like man among even amongst failures redfall did better well golem True. had more players last yeah, year yeah golem. you know what i mean yep, this yep. is a historical failure for something that costs this much for something rammed with it's these a politics, terrible miscue it is you know, it's a it's a historical failure, but something that I can't be happier about. Yeah, right. We can only hope that Sony is gonna take this and say F this and turn around and run yeah, in the I opposite mean, direction, you know, right? Like hopefully most people whose incentive for doing what they do is money will on this basis yeah. be pushed in other directions. But what brings us to talking about this today is this article I noticed from PC Gamer this morning mm -hmm. called The Eagerness to Grave Dance on Unpopular Games Has Become a Bad Habit. And this guy is essentially saying, you know, people have taken the failure of this or that game as a moral justification for celebrating its failure and for uh, telling the developers how much they deserve it and all of this mean and naughty yep. stuff. Yep. And uh, we shouldn't cultivate this attitude. It's apparently immoral to his estimation. And I guess he thinks that it'll be uh, prejudicial to the publication of good games in the future. And, you know, I think we should take an, a, a couple of minutes today to say mm -hmm. how stupid this guy is yeah. and how wrong he is. Because Agreed. nothing says that you love the good and celebrate it so much as your perfect hatred for evil. For evil, And your exactly. ability to celebrate when bad things happen to bad people and things. Yep. That is... It's equivalent with your love of the good. And I think we should talk a little bit about this in the context of Concord. Of course. But first, it's going to be important to nail down exactly why this game is trash. We've given you all the pieces for coming to this uh, conclusion on your own before, but I think mm -hmm. it'd be worth mm -hmm. running them down. It's a live service game. Yep. You know? And what does that mean? Well, in the first place, a live service game can never be uh, an original being conceived for its own sake. You know, mm -hmm. Miyazaki builds Dark Souls. He conceives this world for its own merit and not because it serves anybody else even himself, you know, not even the players who play it, incidentally. Yeah. It's self-contained yeah. and it regulates the gameplay that he imposes it on. You know, if that's the world and you experience it with the controller and with the virtual actions you perform as the character, the idea he's come up with perfectly dictates what you're doing in the game. Yeah. Now in a live service game, it can't be that. Nope. No matter what the guy designs, his idea is already limited by the format he's working within. It needs to, right. for example, have no determinate narrative beginning or ending, let's say. It needs to accommodate the same match-based game, match gameplay style in perpetuity. It needs yeah. to be a fictional justification for that. Let's the way say. I see it, like instead of having a complete world, you, you have like pieces of it in like a facade, like multiplayer levels and such, right? You're, you're not actually building like a complete thing because you don't need to at the end of the day, right? I think so. I, it's I, terrible. I, it sucks. I think it does suck. It's I, made less creative. It's think, not, uh, you know. Yeah, man, you, you can't really, you're not free to build a world and the yeah. world you build is not free to regulate the gameplay as expressive matter because it's already beholden to certain design conventions before you even come up with that idea at all, right? Yeah. In this case, the matter dictates to the form how it has to be and not the other way around. Right. So you can't really build a good world because you're working within these conventions and you need to accommodate a certain style of play, right? Yeah, yeah what you pretty much. Do, and it's right? not even uh, like a multiplayer specific thing. I like multiplayer games, but it's just... I, don't I like selling better player so much as it's yeah. a side, it's a service. Right? I liked them better before they were all live service games, yeah. right? So anyway, the world you're building is always going to be instrumental to the service or the human yeah. interaction it is supposed to facilitate. That's a simple way to put it. Where in the case of making a work of art, it's supposed to be that the stuff, the words, the painting, the gameplay conventions, the stuff you're using to express the idea yeah. should be in service of the idea. And here right. that is reversed. Right. That's the first necessary deficiency of this kind of game, of any yeah. game in this genre, no matter how good it is, right? Yep. It's a necessary deficiency. And that's on the part of what I'd call the, the, the things 
form or formal cause, what it is, the world you're trying to depict with the game. But there's also a deficiency on part of the live service matter itself, on, on part of the gameplay conventions. Though it may be inconvenient, I think this is an analogy to get the point across, it may be inconvenient to have paper books or even games on physical discs. Mm -hmm. But the benefit of this is that the the disc or the book or whatever is a sufficient material cause for you to access that yeah media. exactly with just that physical artifact your access to the media is guaranteed as long as you protect it from perishing in a fire or being stolen right you can continue to access that media exactly right? in these cases there is no sufficient material basis for you to continually access it you only no. do so based on the other guy's goodwill and willingness to let you yeah, <laughs> and, basically, uh, and yeah. of course his uh, ability to keep making profit off you doing so if that ability goes away he's going to shut that's down the, the thing too, like right? this game would have to turn around and make a, a ton of money and i don't think it can yeah, it's not, i it's, don't i don't think it no, can it, it it's can free to play yeah. and that yeah. probably won't exist for yeah. very long and even though it's live service like they won't be able to sell enough to no. recoup the cost like it's there's no awesome. whales that are going to be buying this yeah. garbage that they're so they're it's going to yeah. inevitably get shut down and the your access to the world this would, is great would be would be you know you can't to access the world anymore right yeah so that we've seen how there's two built-in uh, deficiencies to live service games on the part of the kind of idea you're making yeah. it's subject to the conventions of the genre artificially right mm -hmm. on the part of your access to the text through the very gameplay yep. it's uh Nuked. got all these conditions attached yep. there's no permanence to it no certainty or assurance that you're going to be able to access that text in the future it's uh, materially insufficient and i think the most the most damning consideration is the fact that Live service games, in terms of the purpose for which they exist, the reason they're made, like it's built into the name, buddy. Yeah. If you're making this game, your idea is to make a service, and all the game stuff is draped on top of that after the fact. Exactly. This is kind of related to the other two points, but I think the the thing we're trying to say here is live service games necessarily exist for the sake of generating a perpetual stream of income. Yep. That's what they are. Uh, that's if it. you're making one, you're not making something else. You oh. can't have a beginning and an ending, otherwise it would be a terrible live service. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just, uh, they it, need to sell battle passes, uh, whatever, season passes. There's going to yeah. be drip-fed content yeah. of skins yeah. and, you know, different uh, whatever, character right. skins, so weapon I, skins. I think oh, that God. means, man, whilst, you know, not Awful. only can the game not regulate its own matter, not only can you not even access the game through that matter on any stable basis, but most importantly, the thing exists for a disordered end it doesn't even have the chance to exist for its own sake mm -hmm. the guy no. it can't even be made if the guy wanted to make it for that reason because he believes in its merit intrinsically it's first and foremost yeah, justification the, for the publisher is basically holding all the content you know <laughs> yeah, at, at gunpoint and like service. you have to release it Everything like this in the game <laughs> is downwind yeah. of that primordial characteristic oh. of the thing right so if you're working within this this genre what you're doing is making something that exists for profit it can't exist for its own sake yeah it's so not terrible. only in terms of its form and its matter but even its final cause the reason for which it exists these kinds of games are necessarily deficient yeah they They're suck garbage, right? and i'm happy that this game is i'm happy that sh every single one fails i hope everyone who ever made them is out of work and never finds another job <laughs> i do not care they're evil right yeah they and as suck. much as i love games self-contained acts of world building expressed using gameplay mechanics as matter yep. i hate games like this and that's exactly why yeah. his point in this article it's is ridiculous. all crap right? yeah exactly yeah and it's i think you terrible. know we can even pick that apart a little bit more right at the end but the thing that makes concord even worse than live service games in general is surprise the fact that it wears its dei on its sleeve yeah this is a dei game oh yeah you know that's what they're making here yep they're trying to tell you from the very first video the people who make it on twitter talk about it yeah that, that was the, the most Steam important game. thing that, before they even said it was a game right that's, that's that was like what it is yeah it's a it's front a and center shooter. yeah you know the thing that they've made the universe they've conceived is for a, a modern universe. audience we've talked a little bit in the past about why these talk about diversity and inclusivity is a canard but I think here we should revisit it again. You know, the, not only is this game bad for being a live service game, it's bad for being a DEI game. And DEI is bad because, you know, the premise is that we're going to construct this universal society where people of all identities can coexist in peace and harmony. There's a, a thriving multitude with no boundaries whatsoever. Mm -hmm. What this person is really telling you is that they don't believe that what distinguishes people is real and that they've discovered this formula for a universal society that can totally obviate the differences between things and encompass them all. A place for you here, a place for you here, a place for you here. Karen's own like chore chart for every human being on the earth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. People are saying they believe in diversity because what they're actually postulating is fundamental underlying sameness. sameness 
capable yeah. of coordinating and reducing everything which distinguishes human races, sexes, classes, intellectual types, right? And so yeah, incidentally, they all end up looking the same, like you said. Well, it's there's a reason That's, for that, yeah, right? There's a reason for that. I know you're that. probably coming the, around to the that, but yeah. Postulate in any case of a of of a of an infinite and thriving multitude, you know, there can only be an infinite and thriving multitude, I suppose it's appropriate to say, if the things that distinguish people weren't real before we invented them. Mm -hmm. You can be anything you want, I can be anything I want, everybody can coexist alongside one another because what made us different, what made me me and you you, was nothing but a sociolinguistic construct in the first place. Mm -hmm. There is no difference, people of this inclination say, that is not, and I'm quoting, socially and linguistically constructed. All difference is downwind from culture and language. There is no natural multiplicity. That is the necessary underlying principle of this talk of diversity. Actually, what it does is reject the notion that difference even exists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it makes it easy to spot because, uh, like I said, everything that's come out lately that with the, you know the DEI yeah. branding has literally the looks identical like characters look the same hairstyles look the same the color schemes like art styles you can just like yeah, tell right it, away it it's like the what same. the heck but again think about this it's it's from people who believe that all differences between political and it's fake human diversity types are, are, anyway. are made up right and that's why there's a cheapness to the kind of difference they can represent yeah. in their art, right? Yeah, there's yeah. a reason why people like, and DEI, you know what, buddy? I think Mass Effect is a DEI game. I was recently playing <laughs> it, and it's a totally idiotic game. If you look up Drew Karpishin, who wrote it on Twitter, you'll oh, find out boy. exactly why it is like this. But there's a reason why, when I'm playing a game like this, about a civilization thousands of years in the future in space, I encounter these Koreans who go to great pains to inform me that their society exhibits identical pseudo republican democracy in space in the future you know the guy yeah. who wrote it can't even imagine a human that's society that differs in the superficial way from his own thousand years from in the his future own. that's you that's know? that's pretty like to creatively them, bankrupt right is. like what the heck man the point being that can't to be them the difference that? is this superficial thing is the difference between asari and koreans but underneath the superficial differences fundamentally everyone is actually the same uh -huh. they have the same political structure the same views of human sexuality and nature and ends yeah right? mm -hmm. these people cannot imagine a world that differs from their own they literally deny that such a thing exists exists you know and i think that like you're saying when we go to play these games when we see the amorphous characters the hideous amorphous characters the sameish art yep it's it's, it's clearly pretty, from pretty a evident. mind which adheres to the metaphysical uh understanding of reality that i just described right yeah, so oh yeah this game is bad both because it's a live service game and because it's a dei live service game it's barely even a game we yeah. <laughs> yeah you know yeah it doesn't even qualify as a game that's why you'll never hear us talk about it again unless we're dancing on its grave. Yeah. It's really the only suitable conversation and, to be had. And really, that brings us back around to the point, right? Like, okay, so this is a game that's bad in both in terms of its material causality and what it's representing. Yeah. And how do we react to bad things? To this guy's estimation, yeah, it's bad, but we should just what? Yeah, what? What should we do? Exactly. Say nothing? What? Oh, I feel bad for the people yeah. who made it? No. I don't because care. at the end of the day, see, this is... You know, we have a cultural devotion to mediocrity that probably influences his position here. Mm -hmm. But the rational way to behave is if you love the good, you hate what is contrary to it. You love your family, therefore you detest somebody kicking in your door at night trying yep. to hurt them, right? Absolutely. That's the way it is. Same if you, thing. If you, you, it, it is incoherent to say you love a thing without hating what is contrary to it. And in this case, given that we love good games, we love things made for their own sake, which are beautiful and depict novel and original worlds. We ought to detest something like this, even if That's right. nothing changes because of our hatred. It is good in itself to celebrate bad things happening to bad people and bad things. It's as simple as that. <laughs> this, this ridiculous morality this guy is espousing, yeah. based in nothing. The eagerness to grave dance on bad things is a good habit, which we should cultivate. And. I'm dancing on the grave of Concord, and I hope you are too. Yep, I will you know? be. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this last week that I, like I said before, I couldn't wait for this game to come out, and it couldn't have gotten better than this. It couldn't have gone worse for Concord, and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> yeah. If you made Concord, I am happy your game failed, and I hope you're soon out of a job. Man, when people say things like, you know, people made this I and they have bad. families, people, yeah. every human trafficker, heroin dealer, yeah, they have slave families. owner had families they yeah. need to feed. I don't care about you. In many ways, I'm more sympathetic to the heroin dealer than the person who made this piece of shit. At least heroin <laughs> provides a real good or service to the person who buys it. You know? True. Comical, right? And we'll leave it at that. Play better games than Concord. And thank you guys very much for tuning in. Oh, yeah.